In this video, you'll get a quick overview of the autoimmunity zoomer test. I'll explain the vibrant advantage and the technology used. Then I'll walk through each section of the test highlighting key features. I'll also suggest complementary tests and end by summarizing the key takeaways and where to go for additional information. Approximately 5% of the worldwide population is affected by autoimmune diseases, affecting nearly 10 million people in the U.S. alone. Autoimmune diseases are still difficult to treat, impose a high burden on patients, and have a significant economic impact. Like other complex diseases, autoimmune diseases develop over several years. Biomarkers allowing us to predict this progression may have significant impact on disease treatment and prevention. The autoimmunity zoomer includes 63 specific autoantibodies and antigens indicating systemic autoimmunity, thyroid conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, and more for an integrated approach to managing autoimmune disorders. Ordering the autoimmunity zoomer helps you accurately diagnose a wide range of autoimmune diseases, catching potential autoimmune issues before they become severe. By personalizing treatment plans specifically for your patients that address the root cause of their symptoms, you can improve patient outcomes through early detection and monitoring of disease progression. Vibrance Autoimmunity Zoomer is a blood test collected via venom puncture. Fasting is not required, and there are no dietary or medication restrictions. However, as with all antibody testing, patients taking steroids, immunosuppressive medications, biologic agents, or other immunomodulating medications may have falsely lower or falsely increased total and specific immunoglobulin results. More on this when we get to the complementary tests. Vibrant measures antibody levels using a proprietary microarray plus chemiluminescence. The microarray works similar to ELISA methodology. However, instead of one antigen per well, we can measure up to 96 antigens per well. This is possible because we attach antigens to silicone wafers, then dice the wafers into tiny microchips, then arrange the microchips, one for each antigen, in a 4x4 or 10x10 grid atop one pillar on a 96 or 24 pillar plate. 10 by 10 equals 100 minus 4 controls equals 96 antigens tested. The pillar plate is then submerged into the patient blood sample, allowing for simultaneous analysis of a large number of analytes from a single sample. Finally, a high-resolution imager is used to simultaneously detect chemiluminescent signals from labeled antigen-antibody reactions at each microchip throughout the multiplex microarray. Amplified chemiluminescent signals with high signal-to-noise ratio provide high sensitivity, meaning very few false negatives. This automated process allows for high-throughput, sensitive, and specific analysis of multiple biomarkers from minimal sample volumes. Before we dive into the actual report, I want to remind you that you get to choose how much information to include in the report you download for yourself or the report you share with your patients. You have three options. summary summary with interpretation, and full report. I'll be going over the report that includes all three options combined, as it is the most comprehensive. Let's start with a quick overview. The Autoimmunity Zoomer sample report includes a cover page, introduction, summary, then lists all 63 markers. The cover page identifies the sample type and includes the results interpretation key. The introduction page is where you can find the methodology and interpretation of report, and I highly recommend reading this page especially the part where it says, the autoimmunity zoomer provides concise information by representing the list of antigens with positive serology antibody titers that are outside the normal reference range. And also the part where it says, reference ranges have been established using a cohort of 192 apparently healthy individuals, as well as the explanation of the color classification. Specifically, the classification of green denotes a result that is within the normal reference range, the classification of yellow denotes a result that is moderately elevated with respect to the reference range, and the classification of red denotes a result that is elevated with respect to the reference range. The summary shows the elevated and moderately elevated results along with common and interpretation. And the full report lists the levels of all 63 markers, including blood vessels, central nervous system, dry eyes and mouth, eye antigens, gut antigens, immune health, inflammation, joints and arthritis, kidney, liver, mixed connective tissue, muscular system, pancreas, peripheral nervous system, skin, thyroid, and systemic autoimmunity, including ANA, anti-nuclear antibodies. The results are reported as both a number, 
and plotted graphically so you can visually see how high or low your patient's results are. In this example, the patient has normal antibody levels to the Sjogren's syndrome-related antigens, SSA 52 kilodaltons, SSA 60 kilodaltons, SSB, and alpha fodrin. However, this patient has elevated antibody levels to aquaporin-4. Note the reference range for these analytes indicates normal antibody levels are less than or equal to 1.0, so greater than 4 for aquaporin-4 is quite high. Note some antigens have a lower reference range, as is the case for tissue transglutaminase, TTG, and deaminated gliadin peptide, DGP. Meanwhile, other antigens have a higher reference range, as is the case for the thyroid antigens, thyroglobulin, TG, and thyroid peroxidase, TPO, as well as the systemic autoimmunity antigen, double-stranded DNA. Also note that ANA is reported as either negative or positive, and if positive, the pattern will appear here, either speckled, nucleolar, rim, cytoplasmic, centromere, or homogenous. If you want to learn more about antigens that are outside of the reference range, you can scroll back to the summary and read the interpretive comment. The interpretive comment includes the clinical significance, associated damage, and suggested supplements. In this example, oily fish rich in omega-3 fatty acids reduce aquaporin-4 antibodies by modulating the immune response and reducing inflammation. So, which patients benefit most from this test? Well, patients experiencing unexplained symptoms like chronic fatigue, joint pain, skin rashes, digestive issues, or neurological problems, those with a family history of autoimmune diseases, and those presenting with conditions that have not responded to standard treatments. Before we talk about complementary tests, I want you to think about Dr. Sydney Baker's TAC rules. Rule number one, if you're sitting on a TAC, it takes a lot of aspirin to make the pain go away. In other words, it's difficult to heal if you don't identify the root cause of your symptoms. Rule number two, if you're sitting on two TACs, removing one does not necessarily result in a 50% improvement in symptoms. In other words, sometimes there is more than one root cause contributing to your symptoms. In addition to the autoimmunity zoomer, consider the wheat zoomer to identify the patient's full range of wheat and gluten sensitivities, as well as intestinal permeability that may be contributing to autoimmune symptoms. Also the gut zoomer to assess for dysbiosis, which may play a role in the development of rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases. A full thyroid panel, which evaluates for thyroid diseases, which are more prevalent in patients with other autoimmune conditions. Also consider ordering tick-borne disease to investigate infectious disease from tick-associated organisms that can later trigger autoimmune conditions. Or cut straight to the chase and order Lyme autoimmunity, which identifies antigens known to trigger the autoimmune conditions Lyme arthritis, Lyme carditis, and Lyme neuroborreliosis. When paired with the autoimmunity zoomer, this test can help determine if the patient has Lyme arthritis versus rheumatoid arthritis, making this pairing valuable for differential diagnosis. And finally, total immunoglobulins. Serology testing is based on normal, functional immunoglobulin production. The total immunoglobulins test assesses the number of immunoglobulins, which is helpful in those with suspected immune function compromise or those undergoing IV IgG therapy. In summary, the autoimmunity zoomer uses highly specific and sensitive microarray methodology to measure 63 specific autoantibodies and antigens indicating systemic autoimmunity, thyroid conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, and more for an integrated approach to managing autoimmune disorders. To learn more, visit the link in the video description. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a vibrant day.